A while ago, we showed you how to build this adorable little vacuum form table, and it has been very useful for us. But we want to vacuum form some much larger things. So today, I'm going to show you how we built this gigantic vacuum form table only using tools and materials from the hardware store. Yeah! Hey, fellow maker, welcome down to the shop. Bill here, and a while back, I made a vacuum form table. This little fella right here, it's very handy, but it's a little small. It's time for us to upgrade to a big kid vacuum form table. We're going for two feet by two feet, and we're gonna get everything from the hardware store. Everything here was sourced locally. It's convenient, not the cheapest option, but we're going for convenience here. We're gonna try and build this in just a couple of days. So the first thing I wanna do is build that two foot by two foot platen. I'm gonna use MDF for that. And uh, let's get started. Cut this thing down to size, make a vacuum form table. So uh, this is a two foot by four foot board. I cut it in half. This board is still a little big, so I'm just measuring the overhang. I'm gonna take it to the table saw and cut it down. I got my pieces cut to size, but I wanna round the corners a bit, so I got a can of barge here that's like the perfect radius. And I'm just going to draw a line, like that. And then to cut it out, jigsaw. That looks all right. Now to do that seven more times. Actually, Britt, can you grab me a Sharpie that's right behind you on the, the on there? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Actually, we're gonna cover the whole top of the platen with metal, uh, and that means that needs a radius as well. So for this, I'm going to use the same can of barge, get the same radius, but for that, I'm not gonna use the jigsaw, I'll just use some tin snips, which are over there. Yellow handle. Thank you. And that's gonna match right up with the top piece. Like that. All right, I got some cutting to do. These are quarter inch pieces of MDF. These are gonna be a spacer in between the bottom and the top so that there's airflow inside of it. To cut these to length though, I'm actually gonna cut them by hand to make sure they fit really well. And I've got this little miter box and I can cut perfect 90s or perfect 45s on here. So I'm gonna start by taking an end and cutting a little 45 off of it with this pull saw. And that will go there with a little bit of an overlap so that another piece can go there like that to uh, sort of cap them off. <laughs> I'm just cutting through the plastic. <laughs> like that. Cool, I have all my spacer pieces, uh, I think figured out, and I'm gonna attach them with wood glue. Uh, the wood glue does most of the work, but I got my nail gun here to sort of set everything where it needs to go. Put down a little glue, position my thing. Yeah. So now I can just work all the way around, getting all the pieces lined up nicely, making sure I get it on the ends of all of the uh, MDF as well. I wanna make sure this has a really good seal, a good air seal that is. Got a little extra material here. I'm gonna rough cut this with my saw. I'll come back with sandpaper and like really smooth that out once it's all put together. To pull a vacuum on this, at least for now, we're gonna use our shop vac for that. And this is like an elbow joint and the shop vac will fit in there. So I'm gonna attach this end into the bottom of the platen, which means I need to cut a big hole about that big right there. I don't have a drill bit that big, so we're going to drill a hole and then use the scroll saw or the jigsaw to cut it. You 
So this is a bit undersized. I did that on purpose. I kind of want to sneak up on it so this is a really snug fit. So this is going to go over to the spindle sander. Mm. Mm. So this will be the top of the platen and to protect the surface from heat, I'm gonna spray glue this thin sheet of metal on there before I poke all my holes in it. So just got my spray glue, gonna spray both sides and tack them together. All right, my spray glue is drying for about 10 minutes before I tack it together. In the meantime, this mesh is gonna go inside the platen so that the suction force from, doesn't pull the top down and cover our opening. So I need to cut this to size. This stuff's kind of like a cheese grater, hence the glove and hence Brittany's Band-Aid. But it cuts easily with a pair of tin snips. That fits. Got the first one laid down. I think it'd be better. I think I have room to put a second layer. Um, instead of cutting that out, Britt, do you have the duplicate stick? Uh, yeah, but I promised I would never wield that kind of power again. One more time? What's the worst that could happen? Uh, all right, all right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's see if it, I've never actually used the duplicate stick before, so hopefully it works. Ready? And, hey, hey, hey it worked. All right, you guys gotta get yourselves one of those. So this fits right in there, and I can tack that down. Ah! 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 I don't think, I don't think it's gonna work anymore. Oh no. The spray glue is set. I'm gonna put this down. This will get screwed in later as well, but this will keep it positioned while we work with it. Here we go. So it's time to drill a lot of holes. Um, whatever 24 times 24 is, that's how many I have to drill. I've got a punch to get my hole started in the metal and then I got my drill to poke a hole through it. That'll keep the bit from wandering and I can just drill right through. Like that. And I'm drilling into this so there isn't a ton of blowout on the back. I'm still gonna have to sand the back, but that's okay. All right, uh, grab a drink, cause it's gonna take a while. So as I'm working here, I'm cooling off the bit. It can get really hot. In fact, once I was doing this, poking a ton of holes, and the bit got so hot that when I pushed it down, it bent 90 degrees. So poke a few holes, then cool it off. Oh, also, um, I have a drill press right there, and I could use that to drill all these, but the problem is it's not deep enough to reach the middle. So I figured just hand drill, which by the way, this little 12 volt drill battery lasted it's complaining, but it lasted the entire time. Good job, little buddy. Let's see what the other side looks like. Oh, it's covered in blowout. So, got my sander and I'm just gonna knock all that down. There we go. I'm gonna put some screws in here, drill all my screw holes and then glue it. Now that the corners are locked in, it's not gonna rotate, I can drill all the other holes. Time for the glue up. All right, this is it. <laughs> Everything's getting to get glued and screwed down. No turning back. Just a little cleanup work, and we can get on to the next part. The 
platen is done. We're gonna try it out and see how well the suction works. On the bottom, we've got our port for the this, this part. <laughs> That'll go in there. And it's a really snug fit. And I can push it down all the way and that metal mesh should stop it from blocking any airflow. So yeah, there's the mesh way down in there. Keeping everything separated, it looks great. Now we test it. And down. And this should connect like that. And then turn on the vacuum. <laughs> yeah! 525 holes. The platen is ready to go. I actually uh, peeled this metal off. The glue wasn't holding. I didn't film any of it, but peeled it off, hit it with some more spray glue, put it back down, and then I clamped it overnight just to make sure it's nice and stuck down. Also, the edges of this metal, quite sharp. So if you do this, be careful. Now it's time to build the frame. This is the part that's gonna hold our plastic as it brings the hot plastic down. And for that, I've got aluminum. This is just from the hardware store. And uh, I picked aluminum because it's easy to cut with woodworking tools, and that's mostly what I have. For this, you could cut it. We need 45 degree angles on everything. I've got this little miter box again and a hacksaw to cut it. So I'll just figure out the length uh, and then cut it down. So the frame will be a uh, top piece and a bottom piece and they're gonna go together kind of like this, just all the way around. So I need to cut 45s like that. There we go. It only took me 45 minutes. We got 145 in there. Just need to cut 16 total, 15 more. Whoop. I'm not gonna cut that one by hand though. I'm gonna use the bandsaw. This is one half of the frame and I've just sort of taped it together to make sure it fits, it does fit. So I can put it together now because I'm gonna poke some holes in this thing. I've got some different brackets here. So that'll go in there and then this will go on the outside to hold these corners nice and snug. So you're probably wondering why I'm going with this aluminum. I could do steel. Actually, the, the probably cheaper and quicker way to do this would be to weld something. I don't have a welder, so I'm using aluminum, which is easy to cut with normal tools. And then these sort of bracket things to hold it all together. This is how I did my little vacuform table. This part here, I think I'm not gonna add that. Um, the the Screw heads there, it turns out, will interfere with the platen. So we're gonna try it without that part for this first go, see how it works out. I've got one frame, pretty well done. Uh, it's not the prettiest, there's some gaps here. Um, the placement of these holes played a, a factor, but it'll work, it fits on the platen, good to go. Um, these holes, I'm not gonna use them now, so I'm gonna cover them as well as these gaps with some of our favorite aluminum tape. So this aluminum tape I can use to cover the gap right here. And I'll do it on both sides. There we go, nice and, nice and tidy there. Hey, I've made a second frame. So these flat surfaces of each of these is gonna clamp down our plastic that will be vacuum formed. I did these L aluminum pieces so that the surfaces out here are flat to make it easier to add hinges and locks to lock it closed. So that's what I'm gonna do next. First, I'm gonna line up these surfaces and clamp everything down. 
I ended up with four hinges, and I think I want to use all of them so that this joint doesn't wander at all. At least three of them. I think three would be good. They're just going to go kind of like that. Like that. And then I'll just do some drilling, put this thing together. Ta-da! It's a little louder than I thought. <laughs> okay, so here's my idea. I think this will work. This, these are, this is a sash lock. And it's for like closing a window. This thing spins and slowly tightens. I think what I'll do is attach the bottom and then figure out where the top should go. All right, little buddy, I hit you. That's okay, just doing my job. There we go. These are designed to be countersunk in there, but it doesn't work for us. This needs to be snug, so I'm gonna drill these holes just a little bit higher than that, and hopefully that's enough. So instead of doing it right in the center, I'm gonna do it right at the top. Okay, so hopefully this comes down. Oh, that's clamping really hard. Ugh. Well, that feels really good. And I'm gonna, I still have to do this one. And I'm wondering if I wanna put some on the sides, but I may not have to. But let's get this one installed and see how it looks. Oh yeah, that's good. Seems pretty good. Here's my frame. I might have to tweak it a little bit, but here's the idea. There's my platen. This will be held up to the heat with a piece of plastic in it. When it gets droopy, it comes down over a form, and then we pull the air out. And then we can just do this and take our piece out. So the surface on the inside here, I tried to keep everything nice and flush so that it fits really well over it. Now I've got a little room to play, so it shouldn't be a problem. But that's why I opted to not add the brackets in here. And it seems to be plenty sturdy. On to the next part. We have our heaters. These are going to heat up the plastic. I got two of them. I have some concerns. They're a little smaller than I thought they would be. Um, so they may not heat all the plastic as much as I would like them to, but we'll find that out. Uh, those are gonna go together, upside down, in the machine to heat up our plastic. So this will go up and get heated and then drop down. Uh, I need to build a box to hold these so I can suspend them up there. So I have a rough plan. I'm gonna go cut out some wood on the old table saw and put it together and see how it works. I made a box. These are gonna go in there, and I just need to figure out how they're gonna be suspended. So that's kind of the arrangement that I want them. And I wanna put some slats across the top here, not only to keep heat in, but also to suspend these. So I think like a strip across here, a strip in the middle, and a strip across here will be pretty good. So I need to cut uh, two three and a half inch strips and one five and a half strip. Here's the plan. Got my box built. The uh, heaters are suspended on some one, two, three blocks so I can line everything up. To suspend them from the box, I've got this metal strap stuff. And I'm gonna unscrew these and then put this strap in there and then go up and screw it into the wood. Chamfer the edges so I'm less likely to hurt myself again. Oh, 
those holes almost perfectly line up, so that's great. And then this will go over and get screwed in there. Ah! That looks pretty good. Just need to repeat it for the rest of them and then all of these. There we go. And these feel very sturdy. Let's take a look underneath. The dimensions on this product were 27 inches long, but that was the size of the box. I was hoping these would fill the entire cavity. They obviously aren't. They may need to be closer as well. We won't know until we test it out. The other issue might be, <laughs> these things are 1500 watts. And at 120 volts, that means each one is gonna pull 12.5-ish amps, which is a lot, especially if you're running it on a 15 amp breaker like most people would have in their house. We have 20 amp breakers here. I plugged both of these into an outlet and it did not trip the breaker, but that might not be the case if you're doing something like this yourself. One of them by themselves should be okay. But for a bigger guy like this, your power needs may vary. These guys do have their own plugs, so you can plug one into one outlet on one circuit, and one into an outlet on a different circuit. So we can make it work, but uh, just, just keep that in mind if you're designing something like this for your own use. All right, so these are gonna be the uprights that hold the top of the box up, and they're six feet long, so I'm gonna cut them in half, so I'll have four between these two that are each three feet long. Here's my legs, and they're gonna get attached to the corners with some bolts. Since my human clamp is running the camera, I'm gonna use actual clamps to hold this in place. The top is done. I hope. Let's flip it over, see how it looks. Ta-da! We got power, we got lots of room to work with here. It's time for a test. We have our heater set up. I haven't tested the frame yet, so I have a piece of styrene here, really thin, and we're gonna see how well the frame works at holding it. Hopefully, that goes like that. Ugh. That feels nice and tight. I feel like it's a little loose over, it is a little loose over here. So I may have to install some of these clamps over here as well. But we'll do a quick test and see if the heaters are working and the vacuum's working so that if we have to make any changes, we can do that now before we put absolutely everything together. All right, my uh, heaters have a remote so I can turn them on one uh, heating element per thing at a time. Hopefully this doesn't trip the circuit. And then if I turn it on again, this is where it's probably gonna trip the circuit. No, we're okay. The vacuum's all set up. I've got a uh, test piece to form and nothing's on fire. So I'm just gonna hold this there for this try. But look at that big spot in the middle that's not heating up. And I'm gonna have to move those heaters closer. We moved the heaters a little bit closer. Hopefully there isn't a gap in the middle. All right, there's still a band in the middle that really isn't getting a lot of heat. We'll see how it goes. It's gotta get a bit hotter. It's this, this is what worries me right here. See this? That's a problem. It's not heating evenly. I wonder if, if it needs to be a little further away from the, the heating element, like if it's down here. Can you move it down a little bit? I don't know. We're trying something a little bit different. They're different vacuum former designs. We've actually taken the heaters and flipped them over and then wrapped them in foil so that hopefully it keeps all the heat in. Uh, I put a gasket around the platen for a better seal. And then my frame is just gonna rest over the heaters. This is temporary, just t doing a test. So we're gonna give that a go. The, this is quite a bit further away from the heating elements. 
but we're thinking this will trap the heat as it rises and we'll get a nice more even melt. See what happens. Okay, now we wait. I feel like this is like a cauldron. <laughs> Look at all this red glowing light. So we've had it like this for maybe five minutes or so and it's not getting any hotter and it's not hot enough. So we think that the frame probably needs to be a little closer to the heating elements. So we'll take our little makeshift stands off, cut them shorter, give it another go. Things um, are kind of where they need to be and we're gonna give it a shot. So here we go. And vacuum. So the problems here is just the, the surface of this is getting heated inconsistently. I think there's just too much of a gap, not only between the two heaters, but between the two elements in each heater. You know what, I'm gonna pause for a day and think about it, strategize a little bit. Okay, we have a new plan. It's been 12 hours. We're gonna try something different. This style here is still the heaters on the bottom pointing up, but we've built this cardboard box as a proof of concept similar to how James made his over on X-Robots. We're hoping that with the foil in here, it'll reflect the heat up and kind of have a more even, consistent temperature. Also, I don't think it was a problem before, but I've added more clamps on my frame to hold the plastic better. And then when I put this on the lid of our heating box, it's completely sealed. It's not a, it's not a perfect air seal, but we're hoping that a, a heat doesn't escape. The whole thing can heat up nice and evenly, and then we'll just plop it down over here on the vacuum table. So, let's give it a go, shall we? We're gonna let that heat up a little bit, uh, just a minute or two, and then we will uh, put our frame on there. Now it looks like a cauldron. <laughs> Can't let all this heat go to waste. The heater has preheated. Now we add a plastic and we wait. 150. This has been your hourly plastic temperature report. 166. This has been heating up for 15-ish minutes, and it seems like it's holding at about 315 degrees, which isn't quite hot enough, but I don't think it's gonna get any hotter, so we're gonna give it a shot. And vacuum. That uh, went pretty well. Some webbing, that's not an issue that we can tackle right now. But the, uh, the form worked pretty well. The detail didn't quite pull all the way, but I think that's just because he didn't quite get it hot enough. So I think our cardboard box proof of concept worked. We'll build a more robust one out of wood and not melty duct tape, and we'll give it another try. But I think we're, I think we're this close. I think we're almost there, that close. While I continue to struggle with that vacuum form table, I'll take a moment to thank our patrons. It's because of your generosity that we're able to do these cool projects, work in this really amazing shop, and support our team. We are four people strong. You have me and... Brent. And behind the scenes we have... Paige. She keeps the wheels turning. And we have... Everett. And he's in charge of making sure we keep the lights on. So if you'd like to join our amazing patrons and get extra credit build videos, weekly behind the scenes vlogs, and early access to our build videos, you can head on over to patreon.com slash punished props. Not only will you be helping us make amazing videos, but you're supporting three families and our company. So thank you again so much for the support. Thanks! Hey guys. <laughs> okay, let's go watch me struggle with that vacuum form table some more. Not an effective weapon. <laughs>
heater has been heating up for a little while and there is a really nice gentle red glow coming up now. The hope was that this lip would go over the top of this, but when we added the hinges, it made it a little bit wider. So this is only resting on there, so it's not exactly how we wanted it to work. It's resting on top of it instead of overlapping it. So there's a little bit of heat sneaking out around the edges. Taking that apart and putting it back together would be not how I want to spend my Friday afternoon. So on the inside of these uh, corners are hinges, long hinges, the whole length of it, so that we can take this off, fold it flat, put it away, we're not using it. We've made it above 320, which is pretty great. It's starting to sag quite a bit. It's about 330 in the middle, and I think that uh, it's good to go, so we're gonna give it a shot. Go on vacuum. See that, that pulled out right there. That was a lot better, definitely. Uh, the spider webs on here, the webbing is a factor of this particular buck, it's not a factor of our shoddy <laughs> vacuum former. But that works a lot better. I think we could squeeze out just a little bit more heat. Ow! If there was a lip here that the frame would rest over because there was definitely a little bit of heat leaking out on the sides. But that worked pretty well. The piece of plastic we had was a little undersized. Um, I put a screw through it here, but you can see where it pulled away. So that was a little bit of an issue. Um, shouldn't be a problem when we have appropriately sized material. I think we're about good to go. Add a lip to this, tidy up everything a little bit, uh, maybe make a stand for the platen, and we're probably good to go. Introducing our hardware store vacuform table. Let me show you its features. This is the heating box. It's powered by two patio heaters. They each plug into a different outlet on a different circuit because they do pull a lot of amperage. They get this thing nice and toasty. We have a box here that heats from the bottom up. This box is built out of MDF. It's covered in foil, both aluminum foil and foil tape. I also have these pieces of wood here to keep the nice sides rigid and to create a seal for our frame. The heaters are controlled by this single button. Turns them on and off. This is the frame. It's built out of aluminum and screwed together on the corners. It opens up to accept whatever material that you plan on vacuum forming. Today we will be vacuum forming styrene plastic. This is a thin sheet, it's about 0.06 inches thick. It goes right into our aluminum frame which has hinges along the back so that this can close right down on top of it. To hold it closed, we have these sash locks. These are the same ones you would find on the windows in your house. I have four locks to keep this clamp nice and tight. That holds our plastic in there. Now, I ran into a little bit of a hiccup with this design. These sash locks clamp really well, but they tend to twist this open a touch, and the plastic tends to let go a little bit, but I have a solution. After clamping my plastic in, you can see I've got a hole here. In fact, there's one on either side. I can drill through the plastic, like so, and then feed a little screw through the bottom and tighten it with a wing nut. Now this will keep the plastic from pulling out of the frame, but it's also clamping it shut. This goes down right on there, locks in place, we're ready to go. Let me tell you about our platen. This is two feet by two feet squared. It's made out of sandwiches of MDF wood with a gap in the middle. It also has a hole in the bottom where we attach our shop back to provide suction. And that'll pull our plastic down over our form. Speaking of forms, I have a piece that we can do some practicing on. This bigger platen means we can vacuum form larger things like big visors or even large pieces of armor. Or if you were gonna say build a spaceship or a set of some kind, you could build a large piece like this and vacuum form your plastic right over the top of it. And that's what we're gonna do today. Before we start vacuum forming, we wanna make sure we have everything we need. I have a thermometer so that I can check the temperature of my plastic as it warms up. I also have some gloves because I'm gonna hold this frame which will get very hot. I have my button to turn on my heater. Everything's plugged in, tested that the vacuum works. It also doesn't hurt to have some extra hands around to help you do all the things. Before we start heating our plastic, we wanna preheat our heat box. The infrared sensors for this controller are under the heating elements. So I just turn them on and you can see a nice warm glow coming up. So we're gonna let that warm up for about five minutes then we'll put our plastic on here and get to vacuum forming. Our hot box is nice and toasty. It's been going for about five or 10 minutes. So now it's time to put the frame on. Make sure it's seated nicely, just like that all the way around. 
Now, how long this is going to take to heat up depends on a lot of different factors. This is probably going to take about 10 minutes to get up to temperature. For this styrene, we're aiming for like 300 degrees, maybe a little bit more. As it warms up, I'll keep monitoring the temperature with my thermometer here. We're already at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I am aiming for a temperature of around 300 degrees Fahrenheit, but I also want to make sure that there's a nice sag to the plastic. That means it's nice and pliable. Everything I've heard about vacuum forming is that it's more of an art than a science anyway, so we can expect some variability. It's been on here for about five minutes. We are at 290 degrees Fahrenheit and the plastic is starting to sag. I'll give you a peek. See it hanging down there? That's what we want. We're at about 300 degrees now. The plastic is nice and pliable. I think we're ready to go. I'm gonna move the frame over and I'll say hit it and Paige will hit the vacuum. We ready? All right, here we go. And up. And over the thing, hit it. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> We've let this cool down enough that we can touch the frame. Still a little warm, but not gonna burn you. I already took the screws out while it was cooling down, and now I can open all of our locks and retrieve our piece. Like that. Plastic comes out, and you can see our pattern is still in there, and it doesn't wanna let go. But there it goes. Our pattern mostly survived. We could fix that up and do it better next time, but that, that's our vacuum form piece. This is totally like a panel on a spaceship or some sort of set decoration. You could trim all the edges off, paint this a whole bunch of different ways. And if you had to dress a whole set with these, you can knock a panel out like this about every 10 minutes and cover an entire wall in no time. This example piece was something we threw together really fast. Uh, the idea was to make, let's say, um, sci-fi looking panels. My idea here was that these can be moved or rotated. They were taped down, uh, but they're also magneted down to kind of hold them in place. But the thought is that I could rearrange this in a different way, like so. And then the next time I do a vacuum form pull on it, it'll have a different configuration than the one we just did, like that. And that is the build for our hardware store vacuum form table. This machine doesn't have a name yet, and that's where we could use your help. If you have a good name for our vacuum form table, leave it down in the comments, and we'll see if we can set up a vote later, figure out what we should name it. I gotta be honest with you, this was a challenging build. We changed plans a couple times during it. Um, I spent a lot of money on a lot of materials. I will list all the materials we ended up using over on our website and the blog post for this video, including a cost breakdown if you're interested in all that, including links to all the materials we used if you wanna build this just like we did. We also have links to a handful of other videos that we followed when we were building this. Bob from I Like To Make Stuff has a really great vacuum form video. He was able to get a heater to work above the material. He also used a steel frame and I probably would have liked to do that if I owned a welder. We also got a lot of inspiration from James over at X Robots. He's got a great video on his vacuum former that heats from the bottom just like we did with ours. There are also a bunch of other vacuum former builds. There's one on Instructables that was really good. Uh, Harrison over at Fulpen Props did one a few years ago that was fantastic. We will have a link to all those down below as well as a really great book on mold making that covers not only vacuum forming but a bunch of other molding and casting. This particular build Build. There are a handful of things I would have done differently if I knew this was how we were going to build it from the onset. I would actually make the platen and the frame a little bit smaller than two feet squared. That way I could cut out four feet by eight feet sheets of plastic into two foot by two foot squares and have them fit really snugly into this frame so I didn't have to use these screws. And there's a handful of other things I totally would have done differently. The sort of things you don't really think about until you're waist deep in a build. Anyway, if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for hanging out with me in the shop today. It has been a pleasure. Thank you so much to our patrons over at patreon.com slash punished props for all of the support over the years. If you'd like to hear a little bit more behind the scenes on this build and all of our builds, you can check out our extra credit videos over on Patreon. That just about wraps it up for me here today in the shop. Thank you again so much for hanging out and I will see you in the next build. I know you're all hoping I drop this in there, aren't you? <laughs> this is some chunky wood glue. I played bass for chunky wood glue. <laughs> so sharp. So sharp. So sharp. <laughs> Ow.
Why are you wearing gloves on that hand? I, should, I didn't think it would be a problem. I can't hear you, it's too loud! <laughs> ah! <laughs> now I just need to drill a million holes.